Hello there, and welcome to Mr. Reimer's Tinkercad Tutorials. What I'm going to be doing for you today is I'm going to show you how to recreate this wheel that I've designed right here. Um, this tutorial is specifically about a couple of very, very useful little tips and tricks that you can use when designing in Tinkercad. Um, and these are going to make so many of your sort of design challenges much, much easier to deal with if you know sort of how these little tricks work in Tinkercad and what sort of tools you need to use in order to get uh, get the results you want. Now, one thing you'll notice here as I kind of look at this object is I have both kind of an irregular customized spoke setup, and I also have a series of lug nuts on this wheel, and then I have a wheel rim, and then the actual wheel sits around it. Um, so this is actually an incredibly simple shape to make, even though it's a complex object. It requires the combination of about four different shapes, uh, some being more important than others. And so I'm going to take you through how I would go about attempting to recreate this um, in your own design. Now, what I'll do is I'll take this and I'll move it over here. I'm going to kind of show you how I would go about doing this. First thing you need to know is you kind of got to figure out what your basic shapes are going to be um, and how you want to arrange them. So what I would like to start off with is I know that my central shape is going to be the hub of the wheel. And the hub of the wheel is an easy thing to construct. What it really is is just a combination of a couple different cylinders. Now, you may find it useful or not useful. I often will start actually just working sort of um, looking directly down at the object because there's no need to have it flipped up in the wheel position. And then we can adjust things like height and other um, and other aspects of it without too much of an issue. So let's just lift this thing up. And we know that our wheel hub's kind of going to look like this. Uh, and make sure that you always keep your side count high on your cylinders, so that you have nice rounded cylinders. Now, I often will throw just a slight bevel on my objects, but just with a single line segment, just to give them a nice chamfered edge, just adds a little bit of detail that can be nice. Now, we can always customize this a little bit more later, but I find that it's easiest to, easiest to start fairly big, and then you can always resize smaller later. Now, you'll remember that if you hold down the Alt key, and you click and drag on what, for instance, the rays up, you can actually like du directly duplicate another cylinder above your current one, or you could just drag a new one in and adjust it as you needed to. Now I'm gonna hold down the Shift and the Alt key while clicking on the corner, just to reduce the size of the second cylinder, but kill keep it on that sort of central point for its scaling. And the Shift keeps it, um, the Shift keeps it scaling in proportion. Now I want my bevel on this one actually to be a little bit more significant. Kind of like that. There we go, that looks kind of cool. Um, and I'm, I'm actually going to resize this, holding on shift and option again, a little bit bigger. Actually that's probably fine. And um, I'm going to drop it down just into the object by holding that little cone icon at the top there and I'm just going to drop it down here. It gives me a nice sort of hub look there. And now here's one of the tricks that I often use is just the combination of basic shapes to create more complex shapes, especially with the uh, beveled edges. I'm going to once again hold down option and then click and drag on that up arrow to duplicate what I just made. And then I'm going to Shift Option to keep it um, to keep it in proportion. Make it a little smaller, and I'm going to make it a lot taller. And the reason I'm making it taller is so I can get this really nice, strong beveled edge here. And then I'm going to take this object and I turn it into a hole. And then I'm going to bring it back down. I'm going to basically use it as a punch to create this really nice beveled shape. So I'm going to combine these three objects now um, to create 
I'm going to maybe move it just up just a tad. There. I'm going to combine these three objects to create my sort of hub shape. So I'm going to combine. And now you can see that this gives us this really nice sort of beveled inside there to the wheel. You can even add more detail if you wanted to. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to click on the top view here. Looking down at this thing, you can always hold down shift and right click to pan around, to kind of center it on my screen. There we go. So we've got a nice hub shape. Now, let's, uh, let's, let's actually put some lug nuts in this, uh, in this hub design. Now, this is where the real technique gets a little bit more complex. Um, and this is probably one of the most useful things I ever learned. I actually picked this up from another program called Adobe Illustrator. And uh, I was very curious to see how it worked in uh, Tinkercad. And it glad to report that it pretty much works on the same, um, same principle. So I'm going to use a paraboloid, which is a very useful shape. Um, it's great for doing things like uh, bolts or rivets or, in this case, lug nuts. I'm going to grab one. It's quite a bit bigger. We're going to have to really reduce its size here, holding down shift to keep its shape consistent. Um, when, when things get really small like this, it can be a bit of a challenge to uh, keep them, to keep from accidentally clicking on one of the uh, control nodes when you're moving them, but we're going to do our best. Now, I'm going to just make sure, and I can kind of see it popping in there, right? So I I know that uh, if I'm at this point, it's kind of sitting nicely within, within the hub. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I actually have two of these. And this is the key for this uh, technique to work. You actually need to have two of the objects. So I'm going to hold down Option, and I'm going to drag and hold Shift. And if you drag and hold Shift, once you've started the copying process, it will move it along basically one of the axes. So I'm going to make two of them. And then I'm going to select them both. I am going to double check that they're aligned. So I'm going to hit my Align tool and just make sure they are perfectly lined up in the middle. I don't need them to be aligned this way, and they should be aligned along the top. And then I'm going to group them. Now grouping them is really the key part of this um, because grouping them makes them a single object with an axis point right in the middle, as you can see right here. Um, now you can see that little dashed line. That's now the central axis point of these two, uh, two paraboloids. And that axis point is really important for what we do next. So let's just double check everything is properly aligned. Um, so we're going to select these objects, we're going to hit align, and we are going to make sure, so you can see here that actually they are aligned because this is on the gray, sorry, hit the align button again. If this is grayed out, and this is grayed out, it means they are aligned on both sort of the horizontal plane axes. They're not aligned here, and we don't want them to be because that's not actually what we're doing, but we do want these two to be aligned. Now. Here is the cool part. If I select this object and I go up and select the duplicate tool, so it's not copy, it's duplicate. If you hit duplicate or control D, nothing appears to have happened. But what actually has happened is you have gotten an exact duplicate of the object you selected and it's sitting right on top of it. So it's actually the new one is selected. And I'm going to show you that by clicking on the rotate tool. And we're going to rotate this out 45 degrees. So you can see that it has now rotated 45 degrees. Now, here's the cool thing. And it's important when you do use the duplicate tool, do not click off of the object you duplicated. Otherwise, it loses its memory. But now it remembers that when it duplicated, I rotated it by 45 degrees. So with the currently rotated duplicate selected, I hit duplicate again. And it will then apply the exact same um, movement or rotation that I applied to the last one to the current one. And I hit it one more time and look at that. We have a perfectly aligned along that center point 
series of lug nuts. Now I can always adjust them now if I wanted to change their height a little bit, like they look a little small, so maybe I want them like looking more like that. But um, now I have an eight lug nut sort of style hub. So that's where I'm gonna stop this tutorial and I'm gonna do part two where I explain how to do the spokes and then the rim and the wheel. So check in for part two to explain how I do the rest of the process.